молодой Шмидт. Okay, that's it. Um, oh, sorry, there you are. Uh, uh, yeah, just I'm collaborating in a smart experiment with scientists everywhere around the world with my smartphone. I'm doing science right now. I'm measuring air pollution. Not many use indoor, but okay. Um, I'm going to tell you something about your smartphone and smart living. And contributing to science with a device like this. Uh, maybe dumb question, but who has a smartphone? Okay, I, I already expected that. Uh, Another question, who is doing science, is contributing to science with your smartphone? Oh, only one? Two? Yeah, <laughs> okay. Great, great, great. We have great projects here. Um, so that's not many. So most what we do with our smartphone is checking email, Facebooking, uh, WhatsApping, playing games, and sometimes calling. It is a phone. But it has a lot of functions. If you look at it, it can detect movement. It knows where I am. It has everything to recognize my face, recognize, recognize my voice. And it's uh, very connected. And that's the theme right now, today. It's connected. But sometimes I hate my phone. Because it's, it has a sort of emptiness around it. If you Facebook too much, Twitter too much. But I have been working on great projects to make your smartphone, your connected phone, a little bit more useful and contribute to science. I'll show you some projects which I did and, um, and we think about the smartphone again after my little talk. Okay, uh, here's an example of connection. If you look at it, um, those guys didn't have smartphones, but they were connected. In fact, this is one of the two scientists who helped determine the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Uh, one was in the north of England, and the other was in the south of England. And they made a little triangle, and by looking at the Venus, the planet Venus, transiting the disk of the Sun, they could do a little math, quite simple, and they worked connected, but they had to travel a few hours, uh, like between Heerlen and Aachen, for example, uh, by train uh, to measure and to compare their results. Uh, last year there was another Venus transit, and these are very rare events, and we made an app for that. In fact, we did the same. We used our smartphone, to measure the transit between Venus. And we did it everywhere. We made an app, put it on the App Store, and the app was downloaded more than 100, 180,000 times. So all at once, a lot of people were measuring the distance between Earth and the Sun. And we already knew that, but it had to do with the experiment. The experiment was interesting. Did it succeed to involve a lot of people, thousands of people with a free app to do something of measurement. Because your smartphone qualifies as a scientific instrument <coughs> because it has so many sensors. It's always in your pocket. So you can do measurements everywhere. So last in June 2012, the last transit of Venus was there. And this was the result. And you can see it's nothing new for science, but the experiment worked. Everywhere the red dots put up and they traced the tra uh, Venus transit disk. And with a little mouse we could determine the uh, distance between the Earth and the Sun again. So, that's interesting. 
And now you might be thinking, what has this to do with connecting love and care? Okay, I'm gonna show you this experiment with a little add-on. I already, a user showed here, he's gone. So again, uh, I'll tell you, it's, a, it's an optical add-on. And with the optical add-on attached to your smartphone, you can measure aerosols. You can look at the blue sky, and if there are little particles in the sky, the sky is dirty. Simple as that. And some scientists from Leiden University in the Netherlands, some astrophysicists, physic, you know what I mean, um, are developed this little add-on. And I wrote the app for it. And with this app, you can see two things. On the left, there's the spectrum of the light, and on the right, there's the polarization, the rotation of the light. And with polarization filters, I want, don't want to go very technical now, but with the right filters, you can see how big the particles are, and what they are made of, and how many particles there are. So you can really make a map of fine dust, and there is not a good map of fine dust in the Netherlands. It's very hard. There are only a few measurement points, and the, uh, the equipment they use is very expensive. There are only a few sniffers of air pollution. Okay, let's get connected. Um, this app was downloaded in the Netherlands for the experiment about 8,000 times. That's, that's enough users to make a high-resolution map of air pollution. They send it to the central uh, the age court, uh, quarters, the researchers, and in June, last June, last spring, uh, a map was generated within an hour that never seen before, a high-resolution map of air pollution. Think about that. What's the use? The use is that you can report air pollution to your local authorities, for example, and that they can take action and make your world healthier. So, there it is, connecting love and care. This is another slide of another app I made. Um, this is Toronto. Nice house. And you can see the difference. The difference is um, a power outage. Uh, all of a sudden the power, and you can see the difference between no stars and stars and the Milky Way. Many people in cities can, cannot sleep well because there's a lot of street light. Uh, but it's not only in the city, it's also in the countryside. And more and more scientists and uh, environmentalists are getting worried about a large amount of light going up in the skies. And you can see it here. You can see the Milky Way. And if you look in the city, for example, uh, Aachen or Heerlen or Amsterdam, is the major here? It's not here, in here yet. If you look up, you only see a few stars. So we are losing a lot of our sky, the beautiful sky. And it also has effects on animals, etc. They can't sleep, they can't orientate. So, what I did is I made a I made dark sky meter, which works on the same principle. It's a free app, you can download it. Uh, and you can make a picture of the night sky and report it to a central database and you can see it on a map. And there's a fine map of light pollution. The last map, the satellite map they made, was from 1997. There have never been good light pollution maps since. So you can also go to your authority and say, hey, this lamp is very disturbing for nature. In my own backyard, for example, uh, make a better light, get a LED light for someone. So that's one of the uses, other uses of citizen science. You can use your smartphone in one of these projects. But there are a lot of more projects and they're mostly free. There are great apps made and you can spot clouds, for example. Uh, yeah, in England, the Met Office is very interested in your cloud pictures. Take a picture of the clouds and they're very happy. And you learn something, so it's mostly great fun to do too. Um, in, uh, you can track influenza, for example. 
uh, you can download an app which is free uh, to report if you're feeling well or not. So it's a little questionnaire, just do you have pain in the head, do you have little breathing problems? And if you say yes, 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 you probably have influenza. And if you collect all the influenza uh, markets, you can see where the influenza resides and where it's safe to go. So, all I want to tell you to come uh, to an end is um, look at your smartphone, know that this is a very sci interesting scientific in instrument, go to the internet, Google for citizen science apps and you'll see a lot of free apps, mostly video apps, and make something useful of your smartphone except for the playing games and other things. Which I don't mean you don't have to do that, but it's a nice feature to use your smartphone to contribute to your own environment and get a little better. Okay?